All right, guys. We already started on this box. Check it out. It's a box of fire eels. When I opened it up, it looked pretty critical. A couple of fish, couple of fish was laying sideways and turning really pale. So I just wanted to quickly um, get some of this really bad water out. And they look to be looking a little bit better now. So I'm gonna continue with this process of getting rid of the dirty water and adding fresh water in there. And then we will probably pour it out into these trays at that point and get it into the tanks. But it looks like they're waking up, right? Oh, well, that one is still belly up. But if you guys are into fire eels, that's a lot of them in one box. <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna scoop these eels out and transfer them into these acclimation trays and then acclimate them further. But they look ill, you know, it's like, this it's too similar to snakes. It, it kind of skews me out. But Rodrigo said he wanted them, so I got it for him. They're really pretty. The night, uh, the red color is is really nice. I guess why that's that's why they call them fire eels, huh? They've woken up nicely. Look, they're very active now. Hmm. Now look at the color of this one. You see the red spots? Oh, this one's really red. Look at that. That's really nice. All right, guys, so anyone want fire reels? Here they are. Are you afraid to touch them? I'm not gonna touch it. You're not gonna touch it? We need Michael here to touch it, right? Okay, so while that's acclimating, let's work on the next box. What do we got here? Ooh, these are the giant barbs. Um, they're originally from Thailand and uh, I think it's like the biggest barb in the world. Um, this is when we went to Thailand, uh, what, actually at the time when I went to Thailand with Rodrigo and Lisa and we went fishing, this was that, that fish that we caught. It, uh, they get like humongous. Uh, let's see. But of course these are just tiny little babies. You rarely see these available in the US. Ooh. Some of them don't look too good. This one's no good. Okay, this one. So the ammonia seems pretty high in here. Let's get rid of some of this water. Yeah, I can smell it, it really stinks. Yeah, we lost a bunch. Okay, so in a situation like this, we want to acclimate a little bit faster. We, I got rid of a big portion of the dirty water. We're going to add a little bit of ammonia remover and then start adding fresh water. And they should be okay. These are very strong fish. They can tolerate very dirty water. They actually look a little bit skinny. See, here's one of the ones that dead. Their stomach is all sunken in. So they weren't either they were probably purged for too long all right let's get to the other bags there yeah we lost quite a few of these in here let's throw away some of this dirty water because i don't want to all of a sudden dump all this toxic water back into that partially clean water okay, so i already see a bunch of them dead in here so don't be too upset. I mean, this guys, this is part of the import process. And with the extra five-hour delay. See, actually, this bag wasn't that bad. Only three. The first bag. There was more dead ones in the first bag. Okay, so we're going to have to work a little faster. Unfortunately, you know, I had no control over this. And uh, the airlines being slow really... Uh, took a toll on these guys but we'll do our best to bring them back 
to good health for you guys. Yeah, I can see this board is really dirty in this one. Okay, this bag is one, two, three, four. Oh, that one's still alive. Four. Also three. Oh, his gill's still breathing. Okay, let's add some water in here now. And this one's got to be done. And this one's dead. I think this one. Are you breathing, buddy? Yeah, this one's done. That one's a lot. Okay, one more bag. Now this bag, the water looks much cleaner, so I think we'll be okay with this bag. But as you guys can see, you know, importing, it's not all fun and games. It's very stressful, especially when you care, you know, about the fish and, and you want to get the fish in as best condition as possible. So every little delay or hiccup, you know, affects the, the, the health of the fish. So it's, it's a very stressful business, honestly. Okay, so that's all of them. Add more water. This one. Okay, the, okay, the eels are waking up nicely. They're moving around a lot now, right? I know you guys at home are thinking that's not a real acclimation process, but in a situation like this, we can't waste time. That's what it comes down to. All right. So we'll give these guys time to wake up and let's move on to the next box. It is now the next morning. I had to stop filming because the health of the fish became a priority as I started opening up the boxes and seeing that a lot of the fish were in really, really weak condition. I just had to make the decision that saving the fish was more important than filming uh, that episode. So I got everything in their tanks. Um, really long night. I didn't finish till like five in the morning. And now it's like 9 a.m. I just went home, took a little nap, and came in this morning. And the first thing I did was check on the fish, do a water change, and uh, let me show you guys the fish because I, I know you guys all want to see that. And everything has recovered quite nicely. We got some four and a half to five inch albino hecali. Uh, there are the fire reels. You guys saw that earlier during acclimation. Um, they're all huddled up in the corner behind the sponge filter there and I just did a water change as well. So they look okay. Let me show you these guys. They were very critical yesterday, the, the giant barbs, and they're looking good now. Let me get closer here so you guys can see a little bit better as well what we got in here. Oh, see, one didn't make it. And we also got these baby red tail cats they are so cute. That is a short body albino self in pleco. We got a couple of pieces, not too many of those, and a lot of little red tail cats. Baby, baby red tail cats. The tiniest, cutest little things I've ever seen. And uh, here, very nice, colorful tank. We got the golden. Kelberries and they got the spider markings as well. Very good coloration, very, very gold. Probably some of the best that we've imported so far. And then, of course, we got this new type of Oscar. I don't even know what they call it, it's all red. Have you guys seen it before? I haven't. Really nice stuff. Um, still looking a little weak, some of the bass, but they should be recovering just fine so now let's come over to the other side here and of course everyone's all-time favorite albino silver arowanas now that's a whole 
mess of them. That's a lot in there. And they're a good size. I would say they're about uh, eight inches. I mean, there's a couple in there that's a little bit on the smaller side. So, uh, and then the biggest ones are about eight. But let's just say they're seven to eight inches. Very, very nice. And then for those of you who don't want bigger ones like that and want cute little ones to grow out, here are some baby ones. Baby albino silver arrows. Um, this is the first time we brought them in this size. I'm glad that we did because, you know, the smaller ones are a little bit more affordable for everybody. So for people who want to grow out or have a, are starting out in a smaller tank, that will work very nicely for them. All right. So that's pretty much everything. So one last look at the whole collection of what we got in, but really nice. I would say that... I made the right call last night to stop filming and get the fish into the tanks and get the job done. It was just too difficult to film and whatever. It was taking too long. But again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, I'm going to let these fish rest here for a day or two. And as soon as, as soon as I see them looking much, much stronger and ready to ship again, I will be sending it on to Rodrigo at Predatory Fins. And then you guys can order the fish from there but absolutely amazing fish nice